Let's get serious. And we'll talk Asian investing. We love doing it. Today, we'll mm. take a closer look at China. So Asia, as we know, is home to three of the 10 largest tech companies on this planet. But where is the real opportunity? Candice Burke joining us now from Sean Partners to discuss. Good morning, Candice. Thanks for joining us. So tell us through which lens you view China and the tech opportunities there. Morning, guys. I think um, for investors, definitely here for our clients at Shore & Partners, China's just grown uh, to such a powerful and large economy that we simply can't ignore them anymore. So I think it's wise for investors to really look at your impo uh, investment portfolio and see where have you got some indirect or direct Chinese company exposures. Um, recently, with all of the media and coverage, it seems you can't pick up uh, a newspaper or scroll on your newsfeed without seeing tensions and conversations and risk concerning China. But putting that aside, I think as investors, we really need to look at the massive growing economy there. It's predicted the um, Asian population, in particular China, will double their size. They're currently about 1.4 billion people. So that's, that's a massive uh, number expected to grow by 2035. And part of that population is the emerging middle class. And they are, they are basically just a consumption uh, consumer class. And one area that we keep hearing about is retail is booming. We're sitting on a lot of savings and success for retail these days really is technology. So I think uh, we need to really look at China and in particular technology. So where do you want to be invested? One name that comes up a lot is Alibaba, but we're seeing a lot of you know, concern there about Jack Ma in particular and the way that interaction with the Chinese government, particularly around that Ant financial IPO. Where does it sit when it comes to the investments uh, at the moment uh, in your book? Because there is that risk there obviously attached. Definitely. So you've got those major um, management risks, let's call them, uh, also regulatory risks. But if you think about it, one of the cheapest mega cap tech stocks that I can find on the markets at the moment is actually Alibaba. Despite all of those uh, risks and I guess concerns that you've just highlighted, we did see you know, the Barber uh, share price fall about 8% when Jack Ma did make that bit of a stunt on the stage at Shanghai. And it naturally makes sense when Ant Group IPO was pulled because Barber has about a 33% stake in the company. Um, but despite all that negative bad press, the company is still firing on all cylinders. So they recently reported their revenue growth was um, 35%. That's predicted and forecast to be 40% coming around. Their CAGR uh, is hitting around the 20% mark, growing on all cylinders. So if you actually combined US retailers, Walmart, Amazon and eBay, all their sales and profits, Alibaba has suppressed and surpassed those since 2015. So I, th I think uh, here in Australia, we get caught up in um, you know, our little bubble here, which is a great bubble to live in, but we are 2% of the global economy. So it would be silly to ignore the 98% opportunity out there, Alibaba being one of the largest retail mega cap stocks that I can see yeah. um, trading at a massive discount. So I think um, their share price is around uh, 213, 210, sort of sitting around that US mark. Um, but a lot of consensus is saying it could reach to, to 300 uh, US per share price. So big opportunity there. Yeah, this is the thing, Candice, is that when you put the numbers around these companies, they're eye-watering. Like it's, it's hard to get your, your head around them. And you've brought us a FinTech, essentially is what it is, um, that has a $214 billion <laughs> market cap. So is this a sound investment for Aussie investors? It is, so um, it's actually two, 24 billion, so apologies on that one. Um, when I was researching this company, I found it about six to eight months ago. It's a unique company in the sense that it is FinTech, like you've said, um, and it is a Chinese-based company listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. What I might do is I might tell you a little bit about it and then reveal the stock. Um, it's a second, effectively a Chinese-based um, payment online technology service and platform business, allowing consumers to pay merchants for goods and services using a QR code. QR codes, you know, because of COVID has just exploded, um, but now China processes about 1.5 trillion online payments using QR codes. QR codes 
you know, no surprise there, um, is really booming in the retail and restaurant and online food delivery business. Um, customers are really wanting the options to pay QR codes, pay Alipay, traditional credit card, buy now, pay later. They want the whole open wallet banking platform. So this company I'm talking about is Yika. 9923 is the stock ticket on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. Yika um, in particular is interesting because they've just secured a five-year license, which when you think about the regulatory risk, we're talking about Jack Ma before sort of attacking um, the, the communist regime, I guess, version of capitalism in China. China really takes their fintech licenses very serious. So there's only been 16 fintech licenses awarded of recent times. So Yikar's already crossed that hurdle. So it is a massive moat as a business. Um, effectively, no competitors can really enter this market. You mentioned earlier, again, you know, with these tech stocks, they have come off a lot with all the geopolitical risks surrounding China. But Yika, uh could conservatively get to a, a consensus of 100 mm -hmm. share price, which is a sort of about 80% upside from here. So that's big upside. Candice, what if investors don't want the single stock risk in their portfolio? What if they want to go and have a basket? I know ETFs, we can see there's an Asia ETF. What's in that there that I know is, is attractive? Yeah, a clever way to gain exposure to Asia um, if you're not wanting to go the direct stock pick is through the ETF market. Beta Shares has a great one, Asia Review, as alluded to. It holds stocks like Alibaba, Tencent, um, JD.com, uh, basically, it is the 50 largest mega cap tech and retail consumer businesses based in uh, the Asian market, excluding Japan. Um, and the performance sort of speaks for itself. So in the last six months, it's performed about 11 percent and in the last year about 60 percent. So don't you wish we had that in our portfolios as an ETF a year ago? Um, really coming back to, you know, China has over 850 million Internet users as of the end of 2019, that's more than two and a half times in the United States. Um, in 2019, 23% of Chinese retail all online uh, transactions was, was basically 10% um, of the US market alone. So I guess the big point of um, what I tell my clients uh, here at Shrine Partners is we just simply can't ignore China. Candice, it's always fantastic to go and chat. Enjoy the rest of the day. We'll speak soon. Thanks very much.